Hey everyone, we're back and we're doing a VOD review, uh, or that's what we're going to call it, uh, of um, of uh, Benji's games with Chapix. Nice, nice, nice. I did, I did end up beating him, but I, I think I played pretty good in it. I did lose one game though. I'm not sure if you got all the games from it. Uh, yeah, I, I think I got them. I just okay. I forgot to tweet. I'm just doing that. No. Um. Yeah. So uh, I've loaded the game, and so we're ready to go. Uh, in the first game, you had the black pieces, uh, yeah. and we're just gonna start out. He went e4. That's a good move, controlling the center. Uh, yeah. E6, the French defense. Uh, on my recommendation, the classic. Uh, D F4. Wow, very aggressive. Uh, but you uh, solidified your position with a pawn in the center. Yeah. So far, so good. But I have a question about this next move. Oh, okay. What's this about? Uh, what? What, what, what was he trying to do? Or Yeah, no, he moved his pawn for a second time into a position where you could take both the guy he moved forward, but also the guy he left undefended. Oh, that's true. Did I not take? I can't remember what I did. Uh, you took this one. Oh. I probably, I probably actually took the back one. I forgot that it was undefended. Yeah. Why do you think you should take the back one, the 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 one furthest forward? Uh, have you have you rotated your your board? Uh, I can see it from from my perspective. From Black's perspective. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so if I take that, if I take his back pawn, then he takes my pawn. I can recapture his, but he can't take mine without like without moving as like his knight or something. Yeah. So here you're a pawn up, but it's kind of a different situation uh, to the game uh, because in the game, you also ended up a pawn up. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. So uh, what you did was, was also good. Um, yeah, yeah I actually, I, I yeah, I, I was going to say that taking the, the, the this one may, would have been better, but honestly, uh, on second thought, I'm not really sure. I think what you did was pretty good. I think if he if he would have took my my D pawn instead, then it would, it would make me move my queen out. Or, yeah. Or, or, or well, normally in, in this opening, in the French, the reason you move the, the short pawn first and then uh, a, a long move is because you want to give support. Yeah. So if he captures, very often you will capture back with a pawn. Because mm -hmm. then all, also you open up for your bishop yeah. so that both your bishops are available to, to join the game. So it's normally better in the French if they take or if they try to take your pawn so then it opens up yes. both your bishop. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, but actually... After this uh, aggressive move from White, you could have won the game right here and then. Really? Yeah. Um, I could have played Queen here. Yes. And then he plays here, and then I can go. Well, you rarely want to go move your king very early. Oh, wait, can he block it with something else? Well, if oh, he, he moves his... his pawn. Yeah, if he moves his king, then you can just capture in the middle, cap, yeah. and it's just <laughs> GG's. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see... I, I don't normally look to move my queen out. But what would happen if he blocked with his pawn? I would take his, his center. Okay, and what happens then? Boom. And then he has to go, like, here, and then I go, boom. Yes. So I've done this in puzzles. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty nice. Okay. Yeah. No, I love every time you say I've done this in puzzles. That's just, I get so proud. <laughs> that's just, that's puzzles paying off right there. Yeah.
I'll look for that in the future then, for sure. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think my point of bringing this up is that there's this common rule for, for games where uh, the rule of thumb is always check captures and checks. Yeah. Like, those are the ones to look out for. And this position was... Um, surprisingly early you had such a difficult decision because you had so many tempting moves yeah and the fact that you were hesitant to or that you don't have the instinct to look for your queen this early in the game i kind of like that because mm -hmm. that really applies to the general rule that you shouldn't bring out your queen too early but in yeah. this instance it actually would have been a, a devastating one Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But uh, yeah, you took it and then you got your bishop out. So here you have an extra pawn and you're ahead in development. So yeah. it's like double trouble. I would say Chapix was talking like he was like the new best player in the world at chess, so and this was the first game, so I was pretty I was pretty happy with, with starting like this. Yeah. You were pretty concentrated as well, I, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel like against friends, I focus a lot more. Yeah, I, I play a lot. I play a lot better because something to something to. It's prestigious. <laughs> yeah. You don't really care that much about rating, but you do care about bragging yeah. rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he played d4. That's fine. Getting a pawn in the middle. That's part of the principles. Uh, once again, this move. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, um, yeah. I guess we had this talk yesterday. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know how to do that now. Yeah. So I prefer when you move your king, king's knight out first, because yeah. that's a part in in going for an early castle. Yeah. Uh, but another point, another explanation I want to make for why this knight move is not so great is that it prevents you from playing your pawn up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. th the reason I like this pawn up is because I'm a huge fan of pawn chains. Mm -hmm. And that's pawns defending each other. Yeah. When you can, you know, create these little groups of, um, of, of pieces or, or pawns that work together, that's, that's very, very good. And... Now you don't really need to be concerned about these all of the the three guys, right? Because mm -hmm. you only need to be concerned about the the root of the pawn chain. Because yeah. this guy doesn't have any defenders, but the next guy and the next guy is is well defended, and it makes your position more manageable. It means that you have less to watch out for when you keep everything protected. Yeah, I think I am pretty bad at that. Like, I'll I'll, I'll end up moving like one side. Like, I I I'll sometimes end up doing something like that, like making a pawn chain on like one side of the board. But then on on the other side, I'll just have like three pawns at there at the start, and they're just not not doing anything. Well, I I think I'm not saying that c6 is a good move here. I'm just saying that um, looking for pawn chains in your games is is uh, is a very useful tool. Yeah. So sure. if if you're telling me that you're aware, uh, that that's that's good enough for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as I said, moving the knight here kind of blocks that opportunity. So now mm -hmm. this guy is is needs defending. This guy needs defending, and it's just more pieces in need of uh, of help than if you just make that pawn chain. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so let's move on. He moves the knight. You move the knight. He moves the bishop. And now he's pointing his bishop down towards your queen. Yeah. But you dealt with that by moving your bishop in between. Yeah, I, I learned that from a YouTube video somewhere. Yeah, but. good good move. Good move. <laughs> uh, and he took the bow test mistake. <laughs> Should you, know, you never take you should, should, should you never take bishops with your or knights with your bishop? Um uh, never unprovoked. 
Okay. So like if well no that's that's not what I'm trying to say but um never unprovoked unless the opponent gets a doubled pawn or something like that. Yeah, or it, it, that or if you're kind of removing a defender because you have a strategy that if I take this one then another piece will be undefended afterwards. Yeah. But just like taking it for no good reason I I think is uh is a really bad move. Okay. Okay, so takes back and he played c4. That's very aggressive. Yeah. And notice how he started being aggressive before he got his king to safety. Oh yeah, you can you could abuse that for sure. So I I would have liked to see you castle here. Because then oh. if he started capturing oh. yours, number one, that is defended by your queen. Yeah. But also you can... The, the thing about castling, they, they everyone says castling is about the king, but it's not really. It's just as much about the rook, getting the rook from the corner into the middle so quickly. So if you can like get the... If you can castle a lot before the... Or a lot of moves before the... The opponent then you can well especially in this situation because here you have what is known as an open file so okay. rooks are best when you have some some areas where you don't have pawns yeah because now there's no black pawns blocking that uh rook's uh influence okay would like play instead you played okay. queen e7, so it's it's I queen e7 is good because you're tr trying to punish him for not getting the king to safety, mm -hmm. but it's just more effective if you use a rook. Yeah. Um, because your queen was kind of doing a job of defending the pawn in the middle. I think casting. If I if I cast one now, that we I'm not sure what I did, but because then all my my rooks would be connected as well. Yeah. Okay, so you did this check. He went uh, in between with the queen. Uh, and you captured. He captured with a king, which is weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should have taken with a bishop and then maybe tried to get his king away. Um, and here you... Um, well, I think this is kind of the first mistake you made all game. Uh, and ironically, it's when you castled... I could have, uh, I, I think I could have checked with my knight, maybe. Yeah, you could have taken this pawn. You also could have taken this pawn. Mm. So, like, taking this guy would have been good. But also taking this guy would have been good. Yeah. So, check on the king. He would have to take back, but you have your bishop ready. Yeah. And, like, if he's not careful, then you're also going to trap his rook in the corner. This is how powerful your bishop gets. Yeah. So this is why I don't like giving away a bishop unprovoked. Because bishops, when when they have these long diagonals, they're just monsters. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, I'm hesitant to criticize you for doing, uh, for, for castling. Yeah, it was just at the, the wrong time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and he went back with his king. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> and now you took this opportunity to capture in the center. Good job. Uh, takes. Bishop takes. And now you got those amazing bishops. Uh, and you're also pointing towards his pawn on b2. I don't think I used him. I can't remember. I can't remember me doing anything with my bishops. Yeah. I think I might have checked him in my rook. So he went... Um, he went knight d2, and here you had the opportunity to capture this pawn with your bishop, and then your bishop is kind of uh, covering these two squares. He has and to move to d1. Yeah. yeah, but then you come with your other bishop. Oh. And then, like, these bishops are working together mm -hmm. very well. Is then there's nothing you can do, right? And I see you could maybe I don't know. Well, the rook is trapped. Simply. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, you're just dominating this game. Um, however, what you did was kind of interesting. Because you played this uh, bishop g4 move. Uh, and now you're just taking away opportunities for his king. Yeah, I think I yeah I checked him next. next yeah, thing. I think I'm that's what I was thinking. I was thinking he can't move if I go here. Yeah, so I mean, I technically it was not the best move because he could have moved his knight in between so that your bishop no longer controls these squares around his king. Yeah. Um, but I like the I like the planning behind this move. Yeah. Because uh, you're very clearly going after his king. And he wasn't aware at all, mm -hmm. so he captured on d5, and then you came in with your with your rook, giving a check on this king, and the king has nowhere to go. Yeah. So he had to move his bishop in between, but then you could just capture that bishop and give a check again. Mm -hmm. So you're just you're annihilating him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so now there's the potential for a discovered check. He had to move his king onto yeah. that diagonal where your bishop was. Uh, you use that check to capture a pawn. That's fine. King moves one step further. And here you had the opportunity to go with your bishop. Oh, yeah. Put, it. Yeah. Puts the bishop uh. on the same diagonal as the yeah. king let's see that and then there's nowhere the knight can go but what you did was also good because this is what's called improving the worst placed piece mm -hmm. so like you have your bishop in an amazing position this guy also contributing this guy doing a great job and you just brought another piece into the attack yeah so frankly this might even be objectively stronger it's just that moving the bishop it, it's very thematic to just try and capture as many of the opponent's pieces as possible yeah but what you did is kind of it might be quicker in terms of finding a checkmate yeah whereas my move would have been quicker in terms of you know taking all of his pieces humiliating him to the maximum <laughs> Yeah, I think that was, that was uh, actually maybe not. No, I, I, I remember that I played one game against my friend and I was like so much ahead of him. I could just go like get all my pawns to the end. I, I just went and made like knights, which I think is pretty pretty nice. Pretty, pretty BM. Vulcan in chat is saying Chapix was Googling chess strats on stream as soon <laughs> as he was getting pooped on. <laughs> I haven't watched your stream. <laughs> That's silly. Okay, so getting the rook involved was very effective because once again you're just dominating his knight. Yeah. Um, and he's trying to move away, and you're just trying to go for taking all the pieces. Mm -hmm. But here, he was very sneaky. Yeah. He tried uh, to do that checkmate. Yeah. 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 I think I saw it. Yeah, yeah, you saw it. Yeah. <laughs> you well, you you demonstrated that you saw it because you just gave your king an escape square on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then when given the opportunity, you put your rooks to work. Just yeah. capturing stuff. When the bishop was attacked, you moved the bishop. That's good. He gave a check. You had your escape square ready. He moved his rook. You gave a check. And now you see... Oh, my gosh. I'm a big fan of bishops. Look at those guys. The yeah. king is just dominated. Okay, he has to go in between. Uh, this is an instructive moment. So... Here, you chose to capture his rook because you saw that the bishop is normally worth less than a rook. Yeah. But what happened was that he took your bishop with the king. So yes, you got a good trade, but sometimes you can look after even better trades. And especially when the king is involved. 
because the king is the only piece that has to move when it's attacked. Mm -hmm. So if you had gone rook c2 here instead, you're attacking the king, forcing yeah. it to move, and then you could have taken the rook for free. Oh yeah. I think I do I do remember me be, me being worried about him moving to b3 because but then I I didn't I didn't realize that my bishop would have protected him. Yeah. My rook. But just in general being aware that just because it's a good trade for you doesn't mean it's the best move because yeah. what you want to do is maximizing value. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, even though you get a, a three, a bishop for a rook, a five, yeah, you could have gotten a five for free. Mm -hmm. So yeah. good trades are good, but sometimes you can do even better. Yeah. Okay, you're just taking everything. You're just humiliating <laughs> him at this point. Yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah, now you got those two rooks working together, huh? Yeah. Yeah, dominated. <laughs> yeah. Well, here what you did is good, of course. But I'll just mention that you were just looking to get rid of his, his only piece that <laughs> could create trouble. Yeah. So you traded. But I, I want to mention also that oh, yeah. if you had given a check... Mm -hmm. I could take it. Yeah. Yeah. You could take it that for free. True. But honestly, what you did is objectively better because then you still keep his king re restricted. Yeah. Because this is probably faster checkmate. And then you made sure he didn't get a new queen. <laughs> uh. Good job. Honestly, not a great game for us to review because yeah. you crushed him so bad. <laughs> not a lot of teach teachable moments yeah that's true he got <laughs> too destroyed right there i can't actually remember because he beat me once i can't remember how i lost though <laughs> oh yeah after watching that you and me were both <laughs> curious how you managed to lose a game to this guy <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah i can't remember i, I must have i probably made i don't know must have sucked something or just or just completely miss something. Okay. So this time you have the white pieces. How can I how oh flipboard. Okay. Flipboard, good. yeah. Yeah. Um okay. D four, this is your main move. Uh Queen's Gambit, that's good. He moves his knight out. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pick on right stuff. here. I sh I should go knight c c three. Oh no, wait, yeah c three, and then then after I should bring my bish. After if if he plays like um here, oh or there, yeah. Oh sorry, no. Go ahead, make yeah. your move. No, I was gonna do. I was gonna do. No, it probably makes more sense for him to do that. And then I go here. And then he goes here, and then I would go here. Yeah. That would be the best thing. But um, the thing is, when he plays his knight out, he's not supporting his pawn with another pawn. Yeah, he's playing it with a knight. Yeah, so if you, in this case, were to capture that pawn, he wouldn't be able to replace it with a pawn. Mm. So in this situation, you would be the only one to have a pawn in the middle. Hmm. Yeah, I see that. So would that be better? This would be. This is very good for white. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll I'll tell you the proper move, but I'm I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't think you're you're gonna remember this. But here, white goes knight f. Uh, knight f3 and then if black tries to you know get the bishop out then you can start taking full control two pawns yeah. in the middle just controlling everything yeah and also uh bothering that knight 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, when he makes the mistake of not supporting his pawn in the middle with an other pawn, then then you can uh, exploit that by making the trade when he's not ready to to recapture like normal. Yeah. With a pawn. No, it's good to know. Okay, so you went out with a knight. He went out with his knight. Standard mistake. Standard mistake. How come? Why is this a standard mistake? Oh, because you couldn't bring his uh his c pawn. Yes. So now he he cannot use this pawn to control the center. Either isn't through... there isn't there something called like the isn't there like a full knight opening or something? Yeah, like it's like a, a knight's tango. This is called. Yeah. It's not a good opening though. Okay. Um, okay, but you're, you're doing fine. That was his mistake. We can't yeah. really blame you for his mistakes. <laughs> uh, even though you are prone to making the same one. <laughs> uh, but you all got your knights out. Mm. Uh, he's supporting finally his, his pawn in the middle. Uh, you're going aggressive with your bishop. And then he goes aggressive with his knight for reasons passing understanding. <laughs> okay. That knight isn't threatening anything. It's not really doing anything. And he moved the same piece twice in the opening. Yeah. Unprovoked. Mm. And now he had to move it again because you just chased him back. Oh, actually, yeah, look at this. He what? realized his mistake, and so he's moving the knight to the edge so that he can can get the c pawn involved. And instead of doing uh, this, he could have just you know not moved his knight forward to begin with. Yeah. So he he's done like the biggest detour when he could have just <laughs> stood where he he was. Yeah. Okay, but at least this is interesting because you played e three, good move, and he yeah. played c five. And so he's creating this tension uh, in yeah. towards your pawns. I think I, I don't really know how to play against this. It's kind of weird. I'm not I'm not too sure what to what to do. Yeah, it's weird. Well, it's uh, I think it's normal. Um, mm -hmm. Let's discuss it. Mm -hmm. So I think very often. Hmm. Yeah, I think the best way for you to play these positions is to uh, capture with your pawn before you move out your bishop. Yeah. Uh, so one of the teaching of the queen's gambit is that once you move your bishop, then your opponent is going to capture your pawn because then you have to move your bishop for a second time. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily a bad thing in a lot of positions. But it, it's worth keeping in mind. Okay. So I think in this position particularly, capturing in the middle would have been a really strong move. Yeah. Because uh, you have so much pressure um, against this pawn on d5. Because you got yeah. that bishop and you got that knight. And... Um, yeah. I'm going to hate myself for this, but in, in this instance, you actually could have captured this one unprovoked. Mm. But it, it it's because um, if he captures with the queen... I've got a free pawn. Yes. Okay. And if he captures with his pawn... Uh, then... He's got double pawns? Yes. Hmm. Uh, and not only are they doubled, they're what's called isolated. They have no pawns next to them. Yeah. Which is a really bad thing because that means these guys cannot get support from their neighbors. Yeah. And you know how I like to make pawn chains? Mm -hmm. You cannot do that with isolated pawns because they're you're unable to connect them with other pawns when there's none next to them. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, but yeah, in general, just capture this one. And well, in this instance, you can also go here for a check, but that's kind of special circumstances. Mm -hmm. But you can also just, you know, get your bishop out. Yeah. But I, think, I, I, I don't think what you did, there, I don't think there was anything wrong with it. What did I even do? You I think I, I never, I never normally, like, yeah, I never normally, I, I never fought to took with my C pawn because I thought like I should just leave it there because it's like Queen's Gambit, like you could, you could sacrifice it, you know, and then you just take back with your bishop. Yeah, but, and, and that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. One of the disadvantages of capturing in the middle is that you kind of help black open up for this bishop. Mm -hmm. which is why yeah. people at the top level wouldn't do that. But, yeah. you know, helping black get this bishop out is not the end of the world. It's like, mm -hmm. it's played. People play like that. It's still a pretty pretty good strat. Okay. And it's kind of simpler to, to explain. Yeah. Okay, but bishop out is a good move, preparing to castle. He captured, you captured back, that's fine. He went with a pawn, attacking your bishop. And unlike the practice games we had yesterday, where you captured this one, yeah. uh, here you instead chose to go back, just maintaining that pressure against the queen. Mm. This is a good move. This is what I want you to do. Yeah. And he was so annoyed by your bishop <laughs> pointing towards the queen uh, that he went g5. I get that in a lot of my games. Yeah. People, people always do that. But you don't really mind that because that's a yeah. very serious weakening of yeah. the position. And I, I always just play like back to the left and it's, that's still like a good position for the bishop. Yeah, no, the bishop is doing just fine here. There's no yeah. problem. But, like, when the king does the, the castle, this is going to be a problem. These pawns. Yeah. They're going to be attacking okay. targets. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. Yeah. Uh, Marius, thank you for the four-month resub. Uh, so, so far, so good. He played bishop g7, that's fine. You castled, that's fine. He castled, that's also fine. Pretty good game so far. Mm -hmm. Better uh, than last one. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, from him. Yeah. <laughs> you, you played the last game perfectly. It's just, yeah. it was easy to play perfectly because he was playing so poorly. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, yeah, because now comes the difficult part, the planning part. Mm. So you moved your queen up. That's fine. Um, okay. For future reference, I want you to know that the normal place for the queen in the queen's gambit is this square here. That would be a good square as well because it's completely open, like on the right diagonal. Uh, yeah, on this one? Yeah. Yeah. And also, it kind of doesn't interfere with your bishop. Mm -hmm. That's uh, true. Because when you played your queen up, your queen could kind of get lured out on the board, which is kind of annoying. You don't want your queen to be your front piece uh, yeah. most of the time because then you know your opponent is just going to... They're going to exploit that by using their pieces to attack your queen, and then you have to move her around all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I think in in general, in the queen's gambit, you put your queen on the c c two square. But yeah. in terms of principles, that your idea to move the queen is correct because in the stages of development, you've done perfectly. So mm -hmm. let's go through the opening principles first. Get your pawns in the center, and you've kind of done that. This is one of the best kind of central structures. Two in front and one supporting. Yeah. So you have your pawns in the center. You also did a good job getting your knights out first, then your bishop, and now uh, eventually also getting your other bishop out. So yeah. that's first pawns in the center, 
and then pieces developed and then after that what did you do well okay he was threatening stuff so you had to deal with that but once you had the opportunity you castled getting your king to safety but also getting your rook ready yeah and then the next stage of development is creating um uh uh so that your rooks are looking at each other mm -hmm. Cl yeah. clearing the the yeah connecting the rooks clearing yeah. the first rank and then after that well you kind of did that with your move as well so let's just go with this one yeah and he moved his knight back which honestly i think is a good move Okay. It's like admitting yeah. your mistake. <laughs> yeah. And the, the knight has just gone full circle. And <laughs> frankly, it's about to go back to where it originally went first. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, because now he actually wants to play this move. Because now he got he already used his C pawn to control the center. Mm -hmm. Um, but he went a really roundabout way of doing it. But now, after you've gotten the connection between your rooks, now is when you want to get those rooks into the game. Yeah. And so, knowing where to put the rooks is uh, a task that really requires a lifetime of study. Yeah. In, in this position, you should put your rooks here. Mm-hmm. Um, but like it, it's it's kind of difficult to explain why. Okay. But it, it's like, I'm I'm assuming this pawn is going to disappear at some point because yeah. there's a prolonged tension with uh, the black pawn. So I'm assuming so, at yeah. some point this pawn will uh, will move, and then uh, my rook will have a, a good opportunity. So would taking here for white be good? So then it creates an open file. Uh, it could be good, yeah. But then you also let this bishop get into the game. Yeah, that's true. So honestly, preferably, you want to go with your rook into the middle and you want him to capture. Yeah. Because now I'm like, okay, I got my one rook on this file ready to look down. And then I got this other rook that I'm I'm going to try to exchange off this pawn put this guy threatening against this guy getting that rid of that pawn and then I got both my rooks pointing down yeah pointing down towards his queen and actually now that I remember um yeah putting your rook on the same um on the same one as your opponent's queen is often a pretty good strat. Okay. It looks kind of weird because there's lots of pieces in between. Yeah. But the thing is that often those pieces like get exchanged off. Like say he takes and then you take back. And suddenly the only thing standing be between your rook and the opponent's queen is your pawn that mm -hmm. you're going to try to move forward and. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the rooks also good. Um, just moving your rook to the one file where you don't have a pawn. Okay. That's, um, that's a simpler thing to remember. Which one would be better? Do you think? Well, I, I have no doubt that this would be best. Okay. But that's kind of because of special circumstances where I foresee, uh, some of white's pawns, um, moving in the future All right. but in general remember that rooks thrive on files where there are no pawns that block them yeah and that you can and you can move the rooks in anticipation of some pawns uh being uh traded okay that's good to know i, I never normally did that yeah because what you did was uh moving your bishop back Ah, oh, now I see what you're doing. You're trying to do the the checkmate. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think ah, so. Ah, yeah, no, because I was like, oh my god, how am I gonna crucify him for this move? Mm. But yeah. yeah, you did have a purpose. That's true. Okay, it's it's, it's a bit of an ambitious 
<laughs> well, it's yeah. it's a bit of a naive move. Because mm-hmm. you're basically thinking that my opponent is just going to play three bad moves and allow me to to get some kind of checkmate. I mean, it's only I only have to get rid of that knight basically, and then it, and that's checkmate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Let's see why you didn't give a checkmate like this. Okay. First, you're playing c5. Interesting move. Uh, he immediately challenged your pawn. He's uh, he's playing much better this game. Uh, and you allowed that pawn to be exchanged off. I think that was bad because then it kind of opens up his rook, maybe. Yeah, you're kind of helping his pieces get mm-hmm. into better positions. But also, you know, you had this aggressive pawn. And when it's traded off, you're just left with... Well, would nothing. Yeah. So very often in circumstances like this, you want to just support your pawn and build okay. those pawn chains. Yeah. Keeping everything protected like that. All right. Because then you kind of keep your superiority in the middle. Mm-hmm. Whereas what after what happened, you just that guy who was doing some. Being an annoyance just disappeared. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, so you got your uh, strategy going. Yeah. And then he moved his rook. And I then you just completely it. gave up on your strategy. Yeah, I think I think because I saw the the pin. Maybe I'm not. I'm not sure. Well, the thing is, you know, his knight was protecting this square, mm-hmm. so it wasn't going to be checkmate. And in addition, yeah. he kind of made an escape route for his kid. Yeah. So, I yeah, thought... that plan just was... It was just never going to work. And it kind of, like, put me in a worse position because I wanted to try that. Yeah, because you used a lot of time doing this. Yeah. Okay, so you tried to get the bishop pointing towards his rook, but he easily blocked that yeah. by moving his bishop to, to kind of counter... And then you unprovoked gave up a bishop for a knight. Mm. Yeah, you you know I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, but at least you had an idea. So you eliminated his knight so that you could use this central square for your piece. Mm. So that's good. Okay. Um, and then he defended with his queen. And you... This is a good move. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because now you're putting your rook on the same file as your opponent's queen, but you're also putting the rook on a file where you have no pawns. Yeah. It's like um, both at once. Yeah. And he went with his knight up, which was a mistake, because now you captured, captured back, and now you have this rook pointing against his queen which means yeah. that his bishop cannot move because then he loses his queen and you have your knight attacking his bishop yeah i think i think did i take with my rook i think taking my rook it would be really good uh yeah you did okay it's a big mistake really how come Remember how we talked about the pawns and how they capture? Yeah. Oh, anything right. you notice yeah, I, about yeah, this know, position? Yeah, obviously, obviously, you take my queen, but it's like I can, if if he takes my queen, then I just take his take his queen as well. Yeah. So let's do some counting. <laughs> wait, wait, hold up. So I I take ten ten. Oh, he goes two up on me. Mm. Yeah, I see that. I see that now. But not only does he go two up against you, it's that yeah, if you had just moved your up. queen, he wouldn't have had any way to defend his bishop. That's true. Because that guy isn't running anywhere. If he moves the bishop, his queen is dead. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Hmm. 
So yeah, um, I'm gonna chalk this up to your <laughs> pawn issues. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna mark in my notes about your counting issue as well. <laughs> but uh, but you know, as a general rule, whenever there's like a lot of trades and captures happening, those are the moments where you should use some extra time to make sure you get your counting down. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you took it, and instead of taking his queen, uh, your queen, sorry, uh, he moved his own queen. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, he didn't really exploit that mistake. I should take the pawn here, I think. Yeah, and you did. Okay. And oh, but then he can take my knight. Oh. Well, the thing is, you have two pieces defending your rook. Yeah. So for the moment, you're good. Yeah. If he takes your knight, you can take it back with your bishop. And you keep that protection of your rook. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So instead, he tried to chase your uh, knight back. And you moved. That's good. He tried to, sorry, chase your queen back. And you moved. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. If he had gone with a pawn to g4, what mm. would you have done? That's a good question. That is a very good question. Um, hmm. I would have... I don't think there's any good moves. There's there three done. good moves. Three good moves. Okay, give me a sec. Um, is it all with my queen, or is it with other stuff? I guess it's with other stuff as well. Um, the thing is, if I move my queen, he gets a rook for free. Um, there's nothing protecting it. Oh, I could, I could maybe take rook. B six? Oh no, I couldn't. No, I couldn't. No, change, I changed my mind. Because then he can. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't see them. You done? <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Actually, Bola got one of them in chat. Okay. No way, you're done. If he got one, you're gonna get one. Oh, okay. Give me a sec. It, it isn't B six with my rook. Okay, I'll take that as a no. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I mean, I could... Maybe, maybe queen c3? And then if he takes your rook? Takes my rook, I... Hmm. Let me ask you, what was your counting on this rook takes pawn? Rook takes pawn. Um, I mean, my plan was rook takes pawn, and then he he can't take my rook. Oh, wait, hold on. So rook takes pawn, and then he takes my queen with his pawn. I take his queen, so then I'm up 11. He's on 10. Um. Sorry, what are those numbers? Okay, wait. Look, look, look. So, so boom, and then boom, and then boom, and boom. Yeah. Did you just give him two moves in a row? I don't think so. Okay. Let me no. hear you again. Okay. <laughs> Take, 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 take. Did you just give him two moves in a row? No, I didn't. Take, take. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, hold on. Take, take. Oh, I can just... Oh, did I take? Boom. Oh. Yeah. And then I'm up a pawn. Yes. Well done. Yeah. <laughs>
I, I said that at the start. I said, I said. Yeah, things. no, you said it early. So I was like, yeah. And then you just completely changed your mind. Yeah, because you weren't saying anything. No, <laughs> oh, no. Sure. Well, that's my style. I don't. I'm, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a proper teacher, you know? Uh, I know I there's a lot of. You know, there, there's the streamer teachers who will go like, Oh, you're so good, Benji. Oh, you're fantastic. Oh, Benji, you're the greatest ever. Please keep playing chess. And then there's me who will, you know, not give you any hints, who actually wants you to solve the puzzles to your best of your ability. Yeah, I mean, I saw it. So I, I guess that's a, that's a win. You kind of miscounted twice. <laughs> And e e f even when prompted, you did say, no, you didn't give black two moves in a row. Okay, so, yeah, good job. Um, Bala, his, his move was knight d6. Knight d6. That is a good move. Yeah, because then you yeah. threaten the queen. Yeah and, also, yeah, and also the rook. Yeah. Well, okay. the rook doesn't matter as much because... Uh, yeah. Well, the idea is that if you move the queen, then then you can move your queen to defend your rook. Okay. Um, and the other good move was similar to yours. It was rook c7. Oh, yeah. Same idea. Mm -hmm. uh, basically. Wait, but then he could... So if he takes my queen with his queen, then yeah. I take with with my pawn yeah. here and then he takes here and then I, I can't really recapture that. No. Oh, I guess I, I can go here. Well, I mean, this is what we talked about for the puzzles that you need to keep in mind what the situation is before the trade start. Yeah. So here you're already up a knight. Yeah. You're just true. trying to minimize the damage. Mm -hmm. So... Any situation involving that you get out of the, uh, this alive, like yeah. here getting an equal trade would be a huge success. Yeah. Because the alternative is just losing your rook. I'm curious on what I did now. No, I, he didn't play this move. He didn't see oh, it. Oh, didn't he? Oh, no. okay. So he took with a bishop. And now, uh, given, you know, the comments we had from chat, um... I, I wanna I, I I would be remiss if I didn't point out that you still had this move. Oh yeah, it forks it. Yeah. Mm. Uh and instead you chose to capture a pawn. Mm. How are you feeling yeah. about that move in hindsight? <laughs> yeah, it's probably, probably not the best move. <laughs> and why is Do that? that because he takes with his bishop. Oh, wait. Yeah, so he would take with his bishop. And then... I can't really do anything. No. Yeah. You just took uh, a pawn that was defended. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure why. Okay. I, 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 uh, he I didn't see that. that. He moved his rook instead. Okay. And then you moved your rook. And at he, this point, he kind of got aware of yeah. the situation. Uh, and he took that guy. And now you played your queen to b3. Because yeah. you wanted to take his bishop. I did. And if he moves his bishop, you can take his queen. Yeah, that's the idea. Uh, can you see a good move for black here? Um. Yeah, take takes my rook. Would be would be pretty pretty good move. Okay, why is that? <laughs> because if I capture, then he checks my, checkmates me. Make the moves on the oh, board. He could. Okay, actually, he can't checkmate me. No, I say that, but I'm pretty sure that's how he checkmate me. So he takes. If I take, then he. He can play. I was thinking he could play d1, but then my queen's on it. Yeah. Uh, so. Hmm. That ain't really working, is it? Yeah. Um. 
Why is this a good move? He could... Uh, I'm going to go back to the position we had. Okay. Um, so why is taking, taking the rook a good move? Um, I didn't say taking the rook is a good move. You oh, did. Okay, can you, okay wait. Can, can, you see, uh, can you say good move? So... What is the first you're going to look out for? Checks and captures. Yes. So what did you first do now? I captured with my... Oh, I could... What did I do? Or... Well, when you suggested uh, alternatives for black, do you want to flip your board so that you see it from black yeah. side? Yeah, maybe. That's a good idea. Um, I mean, by playing here, you kind of threaten checkmate. But not really because of that. Well, you already kind of discussed that move. And as far as, as I could tell, you didn't really have a good follow-up. Oh, I see it. Boom. Oh, wait, no, wait. No, no mind. I changed my mind. I thought, okay, I changed my mind. Okay, but now you're you're onto something, right? Because what are you doing now? Um, Getting checks. And I mean, what what I was, what my, what I was thinking about was if I play here, then he would capture his rook and then I, I just take. Yeah. But then I forgot, I forgot his queen was there as well. Yeah. No, I, I see what you thought, but what yeah. you're doing now is you're examining checks and you're examining captures, right? Mm. So this is the key to discovering any hidden possibilities. So um. are there any checks or captures for black that you haven't seen? There's a bishop um, on, on here, but I don't think that's... I mean, he. I'll just go here. He goes there. Yeah. And then maybe. I mean, I was thinking like here could be a good move, maybe. But actually, no, that's not a good move. I don't know what I'm saying. He just takes. Um. Okay. Um. I. I. I think. Uh, let's move on. Okay. So I, I'm gonna play this move. Oh, I said that. Yeah, no, you didn't really say that. You don't get points for being <laughs> able to that, spot right. checks and captures. Because you need okay, to have I... the right follow-up. Okay, so then he plays here, or I play there, and... And then... Oh... Wait. What is different now compared to the position we had? Um. Oh, I remember the game now. I remember the game now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. So that could have <laughs> happened. Uh, but he didn't see it. Oh, he didn't? Oh, no. okay. Never mind. Maybe I'm thinking about something else. Yeah. So um, switch back so that you see it from White's perspective. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, he had a big opportunity there. Yeah. Uh, but instead, he played his rook to c8. Okay. And now we're going to do the same exercise from the other way around. Okay. Well, for, what's the best move for me? Yeah. Oh, I see it. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe. I'm thinking, um, wait, let me think this through. I'm thinking like here. Oh, never mind. I don't know why I thought that. Okay, never mind. I, uh, what is I'll the just... problem with that move? <laughs> he, has, he has a rook on it. Yeah. Um. Um. I mean, are there any there. other captures? I mean, there's. Oh, okay. Try to just do arrows on all the captures you can see in this position. Okay. Um. Boom. I think that's it. I mean, like over here as well, but yeah, and here. Yeah, there's one more. One more. Uh, is it? Oh, okay. yeah. 
Okay, yeah. so now you got some studying to do. Uh, well, yeah. actually, you eliminated one already, right? So you can remove the arrow. Oh, I think I know what's good. Okay. I think, I know what's good. I think taking here would be good. Why is then, that? Because then uh, he takes with rook, I yeah. take with rook, and then that's check, and he defends it by going here, and then I take the bishop. Yeah. And then um, what happens? And then... Um, I could, I, I don't know, I could take this pawn. <gasps> take this pawn, yeah. Take this, oh, wait. Yeah, just take that pawn for free, maybe. Oh, no, his king would be there. Maybe not. But then I'm up a bishop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, this is, there's a lot of captures available. Um, uh, I was kind of hoping when I prompted you to ask what's wrong with this queen takes e6. Uh, I, I was hoping when I prompted you that the problem is that the rook protects. That's what I said. No? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I was hoping that you would then do um, uh, think about this rook takes c8 with the idea of distracting his rook. Ooh. Yeah, I see that. So when the rook takes back, now is the time to get in there with the queen. Mm, yeah. And, and you win the game. Okay. The yeah. the reason what you said was um, incorrect is because really? after you take this one and the queen takes back, yes, you get the bishop for free. Oh, he checkmates me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. So there's yeah. this kind of rule in chess that long calculations are wrong calculations. That when you're trying to do like really advanced stuff, you're always you're often prone to like making some mistake in it because there's just going to be so many possibilities and it's difficult to calculate and foresee everything. Yeah, so I should have just seen to remove the defender from that. Um, yeah, preferably, but, but also it's like, uh, for you at the stage of development where you are, it makes sense that, um, even though I'm kind of uh, prompting you to make like three move calculations, uh, in a real game, I want you to kind of, uh, readjust for every move. Yeah. Because I think if you had had this position in front of you, there is no doubt in my mind that you would find this queen move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, I'm I'm curious as to why you didn't want to take this guy. Uh, because he checkmates me. Yes. Well done. Yeah. Uh, do you don't know what you played? <laughs> yeah, sure. Go for it. So you took the bishop. Uh. And he, he took your queen. queen. <laughs> and here you could and still yeah. save yourself. Because yeah, you I could take it. his rook. And you're down <laughs> a queen, but you have uh, decent chances. Because yeah. you have a rook and a bishop. In terms of number of points, you're doing okay. Mm. But, yeah, you took the queen. And then... Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why, yeah, I think it's nice to have like an escape square that's pretty yeah pretty nice it's definitely nice to have that's what i'm saying i never i always end up with like these pawns just like here just like they, they're just always at like the start because like, I, I don't know when i should be developing them or like moving them yeah well i think after you get your rooks involved maybe you can consider it because mm -hmm. okay. it's like then you when you have connection between the rooks and when you move your rooks to the middle then you're kind of done with yeah. full development and mm -hmm. then it's all about plans and maybe one of the plans would be to to give your king some breathing space yeah um yeah no this was uh this was a interesting game um mm -hmm. and i mean the only reason you lost you were dominating once again yeah but the reason you lost was because you took a pawn that was defended yeah. And and then you got in trouble because there were difficult capture sequences. Mm -hmm. 
And I know I've said this to you before, but you know, I feel like this is an, a good opportunity to to repeat myself. Um, it may be tiresome, but puzzles is the fastest way to improve uh, when you're starting out. And yeah. like all your games will be decided by just capturing more pieces than the opponent. And when yeah. you're comfortable by making these calculations, uh, you yeah, you're, it, it's going to be an a extreme boost, uh, mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you want to do the final game? Uh, I don't mind. I'm down. Uh, okay. So, uh, let me find it here in my notes. So this was the game you won. Yeah. To make it a 2-1 score. <laughs> uh, okay, this time with the black pieces. So I'm flipping the board again. Yep. Um, and like uh, these games were played a while ago, right? A few days. Yeah. Not too long. Yeah. Well, it's before we started having lessons, right? Uh, I think we had one. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, d4, d5, good good move, taking uh, control in the center with a pawn, yeah. uh, supporting with your other pawn, getting ready to get your knight out and your bishop into the game so that you can castle. Yeah. So far, so good. Bishop coming out, giving a check to your king. I think I blocked with my knight. You did, didn't you? Yeah. And what's the problem with that? It blocks my c pawn yes so now yeah. you're unable to move that guy forward and start putting yeah. pressure in towards white's uh center yeah, yeah i i always see it, uh, i mean i see it now that it's a bad move but i saw it as developing my pieces and also you know be, like blocking you know a threat so i had like two at once yeah um but that same can be applied for putting your bishop in between yeah this also blocks while getting your pieces out mm -hmm. and this has the added benefit of the fact that you placed all your pawns on the light squares and mm -hmm. so these pawns are often standing in the way of your bishop that's on the light squares yeah that's true and if you were able to do this trade not only would you get your pieces into the game quicker you would also have like a, a really good uh, relationship between mm -hmm. your pawns covering the light squares and your remaining bishop covering the dark squares. And it's also bad for him because he's he has a dark square bishop and all this stuff. On Precisely. Dark and the, the complete opposite for him. These yeah. pawns just standing in the way of his bishop. Good mm -hmm. point. Yeah, very good point. Okay, so knight out. He captured, unprovoked. Not a fan <laughs> of that. But at least this time, he gave you doubled pawns. Yeah. So sometimes sure. you can do that uh, when the opponent gets doubled pawns. Uh, he moved his knight out. What do you think about that move? Uh, bad. Can't move C pawn out. Yes, yes. Well done. So uh, he, his influence over the center is not going to be great now that mm. he, he made that move. And you're just focusing on getting your knight out. That's good. He played b3. That's fine. And you played c5. Love that move. Yeah. Putting pressure in towards the middle. Mm -hmm. He went out with his bishop. And you played your rook. Okay, good. I mean... um. Putting the rook on a file where you do not have a pawn. Yeah. So th so that's pretty good. Um, uh, I would have preferred to see you maybe going to, to go for the castle sooner. Okay. But I respect the internal logic of your move. Yeah. So I, sh I should have done like e7 with bishop. Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, I, I would have probably taken this one. Mm. Um, and and then gone here. Okay. 
but that's just because you know you know how we talked about when you move your bishop and then they yeah, capture and then you yeah, have to move the bishop again yeah and then he would also kind of open up for his guy yeah so yeah okay um but r putting the rook on an open file is is good good strat I feel like it's it's kind of I feel like it's kind of bad because I also can't really do much of it because it's got like this yes as well. yes like. yes good point this is also another good yeah so your rook is on an open file but it's not really doing much because he has two pawns defending the guy who's kind of blocking the rook yeah so there's no way your rook is actually gonna get any traction there. Mm. Okay so he moved his queen out. You moved your pawn. Mm, not liking this move. Mm. I uh, think I was I was thinking. Let me think. You you I wanted just, your queen out. I I can tell. Yeah, probably. Well, I mean, I I still wanted to, to just take and you know get castled. Yeah, yeah, be best. But okay, fair enough. Uh, he castled. And now, yeah, this is another reason this pawn move isn't isn't my favorite because you're putting just additional pawns on the light squares, and you already yeah. got this bishop that's in some trouble. Mm -hmm. And so now you play this bishop out here, which is attempting to get it into a, trying to give it a purpose, but you know there's just no white pieces on this diagonal. Yeah. So you're not really threatening anything. Okay, and he played knight to the edge, which is a good move by him, actually. Because he's trying to get his, his bishop into the game. Mm. And, and by attacking your pawn, he's kind of forcing matters. He's forcing you to do something. Yeah. And, um, well, this is a bit, this is like high-level strategy. Uh, but when you took this one, you helped his bishop getting into a, a pretty nice position. Because it's, it's threatening both sides. Yeah, that is true. But what I would have liked to see you do is, is C4. C4. Yeah. And okay. this is weird because then you're blocking your own bishop. It's also defending it. Uh, but, but my point is that now his bishop is being blocked by his pawn. Yeah. So I can just leave it there for like the entire game basically. Well, that would be the objective. I actually, on second thought, I'm not sure this is a good move, but it, it, it's a, like a, a, something to think about strategically mm. on on trying trying to prevent trying to think about not only your own position but also the potential in your opponent's pieces. Yeah. Hey, CJ. Thank you for the raid. Um. So, so yeah, I, on second thought, yeah, and also my chat is saying, eh, there's a problem. So, yeah, C4 wasn't probably that good. But it, it illustrates an important point that yeah. you can kind of, you can make, you can make decisions that try and limit the scope of your opponent's pieces. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you took, he his bishop took back, getting the bishop in a good position. You came up with a check. The king moved. So far, so good. And now you played queen c7. Mm. Uh, which controls some squares in the middle and also protects your pawn on the side. Yeah. Uh, but it leaves your knight vulnerable to two white pieces. That is true. Yeah. Um... But honestly, it's not the end of the world if he takes this one because his bishop was pretty powerful. Good. Uh, and he, he did take it. You took back and his, his queen came in. So you're a pawn down and you have not castled and now you mm. moved your rook so you're never going to get to castle. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. But you have the bishop pair, and you have a rook that's pointing towards his king. Yeah, I think I think I wanted to take the 
the G two pawn on the, on that. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Uh, but he moved it to protect. Mm. Yeah. And then you moved your queen up. It's fine. Uh, he moved his rook, which makes no sense. He should have tried to develop his pieces, you know? He has yeah. two guys just standing in the corner, not doing anything. Yeah. Those pieces really should get into the game. Uh, but he went up with the rook. Not sure what his idea is. Uh, you used your rook to try and chase the queen. The queen gave a check. But you had seen that, you know, your rook is protected by your queen. Mm. So that's fine. On the other hand, he captured a pawn on the edge of the board. Yeah. So that's now bad. he's two pawns up, but he still didn't get these guys into the game. So would you say I'm still like in this position, I'm still like up because he his pieces are just like not doing anything. Um no, I think you're in serious trouble, but you have some <laughs> counter chances because of um because he didn't get his his pieces into play. Okay. Okay, um, objectively maybe you're just winning. I mean, if, if you play e5 to push his rook back. Mm. And then if his rook goes back, then you go queen b4. The idea is that uh if he now just does some random move, you can capture his knight. Because yeah. he cannot take your queen. Yeah. Uh so this threat of taking this this knight is pretty strong. <laughs> and if he backs up, then you can probably try and create some attack towards the king. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like checkmate, checkmate and one, right? If I if you take the knight there. Uh, yeah, it's white's move, though. Oh, okay. So the, the knight is going to move yeah. away. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, you got some you got some pretty decent attacking chances. Uh, the problem was that the way you found kind of the right idea to try and push him back, but when you played c4 instead of this e5, um, c5 instead of the e5 move, uh, mm -hmm. then he got an extra option because now he could move his rook into an attacking position. Yeah. Whereas if you'd gone with the other pawn, then this pawn also would have covered that f4 square. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, he started some counterattack. Uh you got your rook into defense, so you you identified the threat and you parried it. That's good. Yeah. Uh and he took your pawn. That was probably a big mistake. Uh but he thought he was being clever. Because, he thought I was taking my rook. Yeah, because he was kind of removing the defender, this is called. Actually. Wait, what did I take with? I'm pretty sure I have to, oh, no, I have to, no, and what did I do? So you have to take with the with the yeah. rook because there's yeah, the yeah. queen. But yeah. Wait, wait, that's not a good move now because then he takes my rook. Well, it looks clever because he won a pawn. Ah. Oh. But the <laughs> thing is, now you have the option of taking his pawn. You can also try and get like your bishop into here and when his his rook is in kind of some trouble mm. uh, and you can do what you did which is playing d4 trying to mm. open up for your queen to get involved against his king yeah and honestly this d4 move i i kind of like actually i also thought i could move my queen there and then yeah there. that's what i was thinking mainly i think yeah, and that's what you did. Mm -hmm. But it would have been better to try and get the queen against the king. Yeah. Because here he went c3. And now you went, you tried to go after this rook. Yeah. But he could have just blocked. Mm hmm. Okay, I guess technically then you have your bishop coming in. But I'm not sure you saw that. I think the more effective route would have been to capture his pawn. Okay. 
because then you 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 get all your pieces into play okay if he captures back there's checkmate in one move mm. okay yeah that'll be that's good Mm, so yeah, I mean you're three pawns down, but two of his pieces are just not contributing at all, which yeah. is why you're you're dominating. Okay, so you went queen d5, and now importantly, if he went up with a pawn, it's very crucial that you had seen this move. Yeah, and then I get a pawn for free. Well, yeah. not only a pawn. Oh wait, he's he's stuck there. I mean wait. Really? And then, then I just take this now? With what piece? Oh, I could take this and then it threatens this as... Oh, and it... Oh, it's a fork! Yes. Oh, uh, I see it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Gotta work on that, hope, those tactics, yeah? Let's hope I would have seen it then. <laughs> yeah, double attack. Uh, instead, he tried to block with his knight to prevent you from taking his rook. Yeah. Uh, but then you just took the knight, and then for some reason he didn't care <laughs> about that rook, and you took the rook and checkmate. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think this is good. Yeah, uh, it was an interesting game. Because, um, <laughs> I mean, you were down a couple of pawns, but mm -hmm. you were still kind of... It wasn't unclear whether he was ahead or whether you were ahead. Because all of your pieces were contributing, whereas he had some guys who were just watching in the corner. If he would have played it good, then he would be up a lot. Or he would have... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I think you always had uh, pretty decent uh, positioning of your pieces, even after having lost those two pawns. Yeah. That's true. Um, but yeah, interesting games. Um, I think we learned something today. Yeah. Um, I, I think game review was, was a good addition to our, um, our kind of, uh, training rotation. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, good. but, uh, for tomorrow, I'm thinking we're, we're back on, uh, the puzzles. All right. Uh, cause, um, all of these games were decided by captures. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be like most of my games for a while until I like 1500 or something. I'm yeah, guessing. I think yeah. I, I think so. Um, and I know you're concerned about openings. Uh, Not really. I, I think I'm I think I'm pretty fine with I think that this session actually helped quite a bit of openings. I think like I I was making a big mistake of playing um, my knight in front of my sea pawn. Um, I think, I think I'm good for openings. I yeah, no, I, I think so too. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. I think your openings are excellent, honestly. I mean, maybe once I get like the puzzles and stuff down, then, then openings or something or like, I don't know. Yeah. Once I get the the foundation. Yes, I agree. Oof. Right. Well, it's been good. Yeah. All right, uh, I'm going to go eat and go chill for a bit. Uh, yeah. But thanks a lot. I will see you uh, tomorrow. Yeah, see ya. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Uh, Rexo coming in with a four month resub. Thank you so much, Rexo. How are you doing? Uh, the great Benji Fishy, ladies and gentlemen. The boy is on the grind. That's our third, no, it's our fourth training day in a row. And we'll be back tomorrow as well from, uh, well, we're starting between 11 and midnight Norwegian time. Uh, so mark your calendars. Um, he's, uh, he's making rapid improvements and he's enjoying the game. And uh, Benji is a fierce competitor. So I, I am very confident that he's... Uh, He's going to get real good real soon. Uh, yeah, I know I didn't read chat today. Well, I was kind of reading chat. I was just looking over 
but um, I want to be giving Benji my full attention. So I'm 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 not I'm not responding to chat very often. Um, but I hope you enjoyed. I I had a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoyed the fact that you know this guy he played against Chapix is one of his uh, his Fortnite competitors, and that always helps improvement when you have someone you want to beat, a motivation for for getting better. Uh, so so yeah, that's the good stuff.